Greetings and namaste YouTube. I'm Eve with The Baby's Booty. Our video today is going to cover the topic of key fobs or keychains. Now, I constantly say that I'm limited by a four by four hoop and sometimes get kind of down because there's not very much you can do with a four by four hoop. But keychains are something really simple and even in a four by four hoop, I've designed them where you can make two at a time. How cool is that? So stay tuned and we'll start making our keychains. Snap tabs are basically little keychains or key fobs and they're pretty cool very easy to make and this is the project that we're going to work on today. I've been doing quite a few of these and they're very simple to make. They're fun to make um, and I wanted to go step by step with you if you've never done a key fob or a snap tab before. Now one of the things um, I need to point out is usually when they make a key fob or a keychain it's made out of this marine vinyl. Well, this one is actually a glitter vinyl. And most of the designs that I find online for the keychains and the snap tabs have the glittery look to them because of course you want your keychain to stand out. Well, they don't have to have the glitter vinyl um, because locally I have Joann's, I have Hobby Lobby, I have Michael's, none of them carry glitter vinyl, none of them. Well, Joann's Fabrics and Crafts does carry marine vinyl. Now, marine vinyl is this plain vinyl. There's no shimmer to it. There's no uh, gloss on it. It's just a plain vinyl. And it came at Joann's Fabrics and Crafts. They had, at my local one, they had black. Um, there was a funky green color. Um, they also had an off-white of cream. Um, they had red. They had brown. I mean, it was just those type colors that weren't very fun was because I wanted pretty colors and vibrant colors. So I had to go online to find white vinyl. Um, I also had to go online to find this glitter vinyl. I'll leave a link below to the website where I got the vinyl from. So those uh, vinyls are what you can use to make the keychains. And when I did order them online, I got several colors. Like here's an aqua and then here's a black. Um, as well as a leather looking, they carry that. Here's a white glitter, the one that's on that keychain. There's a purplish looking color. And then we have, uh, woo, this is pretty and it has like a texture to it. Nope, that didn't come from there. Let's move that to the side. Um, we have a rose color, we have a bubblegum pink, and we even have gold. So these, I'm sorry, did come from that place. And these are the marine uh, glitter vinyl. These are called glitter vinyl. The glitter is behind a clear vinyl so you don't feel any texture. All you feel is the slick vinyl. Now, because I had to order them online and wait on it to come, I says, well, I'm gonna go and check at Joann's. I'm gonna check uh, which I already knew Joann's didn't have the glitter vinyl. Then I went to go check Hobby Lobby and Michael's. Now at Hobby Lobby, I did find this other fabric. It's called Glitter Canvas. Now this actually came from Hobby Lobby and you can feel it. You can feel the glitter on the surface. There's no clear vinyl on the top um, that will uh, cover this. You'll, you'll definitely feel that. They also had this type of glitter canvas. And as you can see, it's like a scale type glitter and it even has this gold weave throughout it. Um, and this is like a pearl color. They also had an aqua color, which is what I made my keychain out of. Um, they have a rose color. Um, and again, it, this all has that gold um, thread running throughout it. And then they had this like brown color, which I thought was just, oh, so pretty, so dreamy. They had other colors as well, but that's pretty much what I came home with at the time. And, and this is the keychain that I made out of the aqua color and put my initial on it. Um, and this they also had, which is more like a disco ball, iridescent, just 
basic glitter and again you can fill it but this doesn't have that um gold thread going through it it's just basically a scale of glitter on the canvas so this is glitter canvas actually and you can get that from uh hobby lobby over in the uh paper crafts section is where i'm pretty sure i found it now um what we're going to do today is make a keychain out of one keychain out of one set of keychains out of the glitter canvas and then one out of the glitter vinyl so that you can see them both being done on your 4x4 machine. What I'm also going to do is take you step by step through the key fob and keychain making process. Um, now there are other videos out there to show you how to make key fobs and snap tabs. Um, the difference with this particular video is I am actually not only going to show you how to make your own, that's what the point of this is, is to make your own by using the software program so what pro but we're also going to show you how to make one on your machine if you don't have an embroidery design editing software program so let's get started what i'm going to do is move us over to the computer and i'm going to take you step by step in making your own key fob snap tab or keychain whatever you want to call it you're going to make one step by step with me so come on, let's get started. We're going to make key fobs today. Now, one of the things that I did was I digitized my own key fobs. And the reason being was out of all the websites that I visited in trying to find my own snap tab slash key fobs, I couldn't find one in the size that I wanted. All I wanted was just a simple little square that I could put one initial on and be satisfied with it because most people love a keychain with just one initial and it was a simple process and i knew i could fit two of them on my four by four hoop so i just made my own and they're a simple square keychain just like the one with my initial on it um and we're going to make that and one similar to that today now we're going to start in so what pro and then after we go through the process of making or designing our own key fobs in So What Pro, then we'll switch over to uh, me showing you how to do one on the embroidery machine completely without using So What Pro. So let's get started in So What Pro. All right, so starting with So What Pro, we need to open up the key fob designs that you downloaded if you purchased them from off of my website. Um, that we're going to actually work with today. If you don't have them or you chose not to purchase them, that's fine. The principle and the process is all the same. So in So What Pro, we want to navigate to where our design is. Now at this point, you should have downloaded the design if you did from off of my website, if not another blank snap tab design and you know where it is on your computer, hopefully. <laughs> So let's go to open and I have mine saved in this folder and we're going to go to my fob because that's what I named it on my computer. And here are the blank key fobs. Now what I am going to do is cut the grid lines on so that you can see re relatively where your lining up is. Um, I also want to note that there are two different fobs. One is black and one is green. That doesn't matter only for from the standpoint of if you only want to make one key fob, then you can stop with the first color stop and you don't have to make the other one. That's the only reason why I split them apart. Now, what we're going to do today is just do a simple, one is gonna be a monogram keychain with just one letter on it. And then the other is going to be a monogram, circle monogram keychain with two letters on it. One for my first name and my last name. So the monogram with the one letter that I'm going to use is listed in here as well. And this one is called Elegant Satin. And I purchased it from the website Stitchtopia. Now Stitchtopia is currently running a sale for the month of June. So if you're watching this in the month of June, you're able to get 40% off $10 or more 
And the code that you can use is June 40. And the field that I went into is under monograms. Under monograms, if you scroll down, you'll see here is the circle monogram set that I use here, circle two letter monogram set. And it, it comes with a set of monograms that are as small as half an inch. You also get the one inch size, you get the one and a half inch size, the two inch size, the two and a half inch size, and a three inch size for six dollars. And then if you scroll down a little bit farther, you will see the elegant monogram set right here where it comes with one inch, one and a half inch, two inches, two and a half inches and three inches. And that's six dollars as well. And that those two alone will put you over ten dollars. So you will get 40 percent off of that. So 40 percent off of twelve dollars is all you will spend on these two fonts if you choose to use them because they're actually pretty cute. I also have a referral code with this company that will give you 10 extra percent off um, your first order. And the referral code I'll put down in the bottom down here below so that you can see that and get an additional 10 percent off your first order with Stitchtopia. Now, back in Sew so Pro, we went we're going to use first the Elegant Satin. Now, I already have a keychain with my name on it, so we're going to find a different one. And in this one, we're going to use the letter J. Now, this particular letter is one and a half inches high. And that's important to point out because this square here is where we're going to put this first monogram. And in that square, it has to fit that letter. So what we're going to do is go ahead and hit uh, not open. That's the wrong thing. We don't want to open. We want to merge. So let's merge our letter J. So we'll go back to the elegant satin and we're going to find that letter J, which is right here. And we're going to go ahead and open And I may have hit merge and didn't realize it, but I wanted to be sure that I didn't open up a whole new So What Pro window. So whenever we're working with these key chains, you want to hit merge to put your letters in. Um, on your key fobs. So this is the letter J. All right. And I'm visually centering it here in the key fob and I'm looking at the space around it, trying to make sure that everything is quite even. Now, this letter J is right side up for us, but this keychain is upside down. So what I want to do is rotate this letter so that it'll be in the right position. So let's go ahead and rotate this which is right here on the strip. And we want to click twice and it'll rotate that letter J in place. That's it. That's all you have to do because the rest of the keychain, key fob, snap tab is already done. That's the only thing that we're going to do with this key, key fob. Now, if you wanted to, you could get fancy, add a picture. Like for instance, we could merge and I'm going to go back up and I could add a heart if I wanted to. Um, say, for instance, on this keychain, I could do that or I could put it with a J and rotate it so that it'll be right side up and maybe put it down here um, and put the J on top of that. But I don't want a picture in this, but that's just to show you the different things that you can do with just this basic plain key fob set. Basically how we did with the patches in the last video you can customize the patch however you want. So this key fob, you can do the same thing. Now, the other um, key fob, this one here, what we're going to do now is we're going to put the circle monogram on this key fob. Now, this one, I do want my initials. So we're going to merge and we're going to select the circle two letter folder or open it up. And here's a handy trick. Now you can kind of see these here and they're a little small. If you can't see them, then you probably need to get the uh, program. So icons, so icons will allow you to see your embroidery files of pick the actual picture of your embroidery files. So get your so icons. If you don't have it, it is quite helpful. So we want to go to view. Now, again, I'm sorry, I went a little fast. 
what we're going to do is open up my letters. We're going to merge my letter. And if you can't see these, say, for instance, to keep you from going and scrolling and you want to see them a little bit clearer, then come into a space and right click and it pops up this menu. And this first option says view. Well, we want to do large icons. So if you do that, then they're a lot bigger and it's easier for you to see them. That's an inside tip for any program. Actually, that's how that would work. So we're going to use my first initial um, and we're going to not do this is half an inch, but I actually want um, a little bit larger than that. I don't want half an inch. So let's scroll down to this one, which I believe is an inch. Nope, that's the other side to the half inch. So we're going to skip that and come to this one. And here we have an inch and a half. Let's see how big that is. Perfect. So an inch and a half is what you would use for the circle monogram as well. So that's my letter E. And now what I'm going to do, because I already merged the first letter in, we're going to hit info icon view and open up the rest of the letters. It should be over here. So there's the fancy and here's the other part to the monogram. So here are the half inch. So I'm seeing the letter A, here's the B. So once we come to Z, then this is the one and a half inch. So here's the letter E, H, I, J, K, L, but this is the right side. So I need to find the letter Z again. And here's the left side to the monogram and I need the letter L. So I'm going to click there. And that completes my second keychain. There's my first initial. There's my last initial. And that's the keychain. That's both snap tabs. That's both fobs on the same hoop. So that's pretty much how simple that can be for you. If you want to make your own personalized keychains, the only thing you need to remember is keep in mind your size restriction on your letters. And then you can put them in here. And as I mentioned, these two fonts are available on Stitchtopia right now. And there is a sale. They have 40% off for the month of June. So if you want these two, because they do look really cute on the keychains and they were simple to add, then go right on out and uh, get them off that website. Whenever you make a purchase on Stitchtopia, they retain under your login, they retain your designs that you've purchased for forever. They never expire. You can always go back and re-download them in the event, say for instance, your computer crashes and you can't get a hold to your files. They have them on file. You just log in and download them again. So that's pretty awesome um, from Stitchtopia. Now, now that we have our keychains designed the way we want them, it's time to stitch them out. So let's go ahead and get our stuff hooped after we save it. I forgot about that part. So let's go to file and we want to save as. So in this instance, I'm going to go ahead and keep it in this. And I don't want it to be named my fob because my fob is blank and I want that to stay blank. So this we're going to say my fob and we're going to say new design. And that's what I'm going to name this so that when I go back in to put this on the machine, then I'll know that that's what I want it to stitch out. So let's go ahead and what I'm going to do is connect the um, embroidery machine. So we'll turn it on. And after I turn it on, I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to take this and plug it into my laptop. And we're going to see it pop up because our machine is on. Now it will only, um, the computer will only find it if the embroidering machine is on. And here it has popped up and it's blank because there are no designs on here. So I'm going to go up here to my uh, folder where I saved the design, which is 111. And here's the blank one. That's not the one that I want. I want to get my fob new design because that's what I did. And I'm going to click on it and I'm going to copy this. I don't want to cut. I want to copy because I want to save this in my machine and I don't want it to be deleted. 
So we're going to go back down here to my F drive, which is the new removable hard drive, which of course is my machine. And I'm going to right click in this blank space and then I'm going to hit paste. And that puts the design on my machine. So now that we have the design on the machine, let's go ahead and get some fabric hoop. Now what I like to use uh, to make my key fobs is cutaway stabilizer. So I'll go ahead and hoop a sheet of cutaway stabilizer and then I'll show you what to do from there. We have the design in the machine, which we put it in the machine over on the laptop. Now we started, we're going to start with the cutaway stabilizer, which is here. Now what you will need in order to make the key fob is you'll need a front fabric and a back fabric. Um, because uh, this is the glitter vinyl you could do one of two things you could do um, glitter vinyl on the front and then a more plain vinyl on the back or you could do glitter vinyl on the front and the back it's entirely up to you um, whatever you choose to do whenever you make your keychains and the reason why I would say glitter on the front and plain vinyl on the back is because of course the plain vinyl is less expensive it'll help save you a few pennies if you have several key fobs to make um, and you don't want to run out of this because it comes in those sheets um, so it's easy to run out of now if you order the glitter vinyl from the website that I have listed below you can order it by the sheet or by the roll um, so the roll of course will last a lot longer because you get more vinyl um, and of course that's entirely up to you um, how you wish to order it but um, you definitely need to have two squares cut out for your keychain now the first keychain that I'm going to do I'm going to use this pink and what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull it up on the machine. So here's the key fob. Now, what I did was backwards. And I'll explain what I'm doing here because I just realized that I kind of made a, a boo-boo with this. Now, with the key fobs, um, I when you purchase them, a lot of times they'll come with a tack down stitch which will outline where the key fobs go on your hoop then you know where to place your fabric in order to um, make your key fob well I chose to skip that step in the key fobs that I digitized because I know that I'm cutting my vinyl big enough so that I don't have to worry about a tack down stitch to tell me where to put the vinyl so number one that's the first thing that I changed so I cut my vinyl out in five inch by four and a half inch squares and you can do five by five uh, whichever is comfortable for you but I choose to do five by four and a half the other thing is the keychain should do the design first you want to do the design first because you want your design to stitch on the top layer and on the back of the stabilizer because what's going to happen is after it does the um, design then you want to actually stitch out the keychain with your back part of your keychain on the back so that it covers the back of the stitches to your design so the back of the key fob is going to show but not the design stitches so I did that a little bit backwards my bad I, I i messed up on that i shouldn't have done it that way but i'm explaining this to you because there, this shows no matter what happens um in doing your processes and being creative there's a workaround for just about everything that you do so i digitize this to where they're separate so what we're going to do is we're going to skip the key fob part and we're going to go straight to the design then we'll back up and we're going to do the actual um, key fob outline after we put this uh, back on the back side of the keychain. So let's go ahead and put the hoop on. And what I've decided to do is I'm gonna put black for the design stitching. 
Now this is for the design. And then we're going and hopefully my machine will act right because my machines um, just got serviced the other day. I've uh, been having some issues with them and there's some pretty extensive repairs that he had to do. So um, hopefully everything's okay and I don't know why I'm not using the threader. Okay, so we have our needle threaded. And I didn't check my bobbin, so let me check and make sure my bobbin's good. Bobbin's good, that's black thread. And now we're going to go ahead and stitch out the key fobs, the design rather. So I have this place where I want it in the hoop where I'm pretty sure it's going to be within the four by four. And of course, you can always lay the grid on top of it. And normally I have my grid right here, but I don't see it. You can lay your grid on top to be sure that this extends past your four by four square, but I'm positive that mine does. So is as you probably can't really see very well on the machine. Um, let's see if you can see that a little bit better. Okay, so your fob is first, but we want to go to the design first. So let's hit these arrow keys here and we will advance actually wrong thing i'm just making all kinds of so let's do this so we want to hit adjust and we want to do the needle and we're going to skip your thread stops so right now we're on one now we're two here's the first one the letter j that's upside down and then the next one will be the E. And this is where I want to stop because start because this is the first thing we want to embroider. Okay. So let's go ahead and leave that there. We're going to put our foot down. Make sure everything is where it needs to be. And let's go ahead and hit start. All right. So our J has stitched out. Now it's repositioned so that it can start with the letter E and the L for the circle monogram. So let's go ahead and get started with that one. And that's our design. Now this is just the design. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this off and show it to you. Okay. So here is for the first keychain. And then of course this is the upside down keychain over here. So now that we've done the design, you see that there's the stitching on the back. Well, we want the stitching covered up. So at this point, we'll take the back piece of vinyl and we'll go ahead and lay it on the back. Now you can use a light source or whatever it is that you need to use to line it up and look at how you can lay it exactly over the top of that. And what we want to use is a piece of scotch tape to hold it in place because this is on the back side of the embroidery hoop okay so now that we have it taped down we don't have to worry about it going anywhere once we lay it on the machine so now we're going to put it back on the machine and even though it says finish sewing it's not so we're going to start over and do the actual shapes of the key fob. So we kind of went backwards uh, because we added the design after we did the, after on top of the actual fob itself. Now I have black thread on the back and on the front I have uh, the design and black thread. So what I'm going to do is switch this out and actually use a pink that's kind of close to the color of the glitter vinyl um, so that the shape of the key fob, the stitching for the shape of the key fob doesn't stand out quite as much. And now that's what I'm hoping is going to happen. And we'll see. It may stand out because it looks like it may be a little bit lighter than the glitter vinyl. And 
now we're going to start with the shape of the actual key fob. Now one of the things that you'll notice that's a little bit different from the way I digitize my key fobs and some of the others that you'll be downloading when you go out to purchase more is I cause it to double stitch twice around the border of the key fob. The reason why I choose to do that is it reinforces the stitches a little more um, and this is going to take some abuse, this keychain is. So I wanted to make sure that the stitches were good and strong and sturdy. Um, and we'll also be adding a little bit of freight check on these threads because you're going to be cutting around and kind of close to it. And in the event that you cut through your threads, the freight check will help make sure that your keychain stays put together very well. So we're coming to the end of the keychain. This is how you make key fobs. There wasn't much to it. We're gonna cut that. That didn't cut itself very well. And there they are. We have two key fobs. So we take it out the hoop. And notice because we put the back on after we did the design, you don't see the design on the back of the fob, which you already knew and so at this point we get a good sturdy pair of scissors and carefully cut it out and I did put these close together um, so that you can fit them very well on a 4x4 four four hoop so that's one and then here's the other And you want to be very careful and make sure that you're not cutting through your threads. Now at this point, all you would have to do is put your fray check on your threads so that it'll help reinforce them. Let it dry, okay? And then that's where you take your time and you cut your extra little threads and then you put your fray check on. And then you want to cut kind of close to your threads without actually cutting the threads. And you take your time. And the cool thing is, once it's all cut out, now this area right in here by the tab, it gets kind of tricky up in there. So you kind of have to maneuver pretty good to get that cut now and I'm not doing an extremely close job like I normally do um, because I don't want to cut through my threads and aggravate myself I ruined many a key fob because I'm one of those perfectionist types where I want it to be you know as close as possible so it's super cute but it's gonna be super cute anyway so I'm just gonna go ahead and whoo scared me lightning bullet came in the room and here you go now I want to know why a lightning bullet came to visit me look at there lightning bug all right <laughs> we had a visitor number two visitor I'll show you the first one but here's our key fob so this one is the letter J and as you see it's plain on the back and it's personalized very cute indeed very simple to make and the same with this one once it's cut out it's very simple and then after that you just use your uh, metal snaps and attach the metal snaps one up here and one right here and then snap it together and there you have a key fob now what I will do is make a suggestion, okay? Now, the suggestion that I'm going to make is with the snap, the metal snaps that would go in here to hold it, you have a choice of what you want to do for your key fobs. You can do um, either the ring 
here or you can do the clasp the uh, clamp type and what I will caution you against is once you attach your snaps the ring isn't an issue as you see you can put your snap on put your ring on snap it and go on and you got a keychain well with this one you have your snap but look it's difficult to put this on as it is and then over the top of these snaps it's even more difficult so what I would suggest is you put this on first then add your snaps so for instance here's a plain one and of course I'll leave a link for the snaps and for the rings and for these down below um, using my Amazon affiliate link but I think these are actually smaller I have one inch ones which fit better than this I bought these for a different set but put this on first then after you put it on you add your snaps so that you don't have to worry about them not being able to get these on the keychain and then you snap it closed and you're done so that's these keychains okay now we're going to move to the key fobs that you should be able to design yourself using just your machine this is for if you don't have so what pro or any other embroidery editing software program it's a little more difficult but with a little patience and some skill you'll be able to do this with just your machine as well now i've already added the design uh, for this particular project on the machine now when you download it if you downloaded the key fob set that i have on my website to use with this stitch along then you had one that was the my fob and it was blank and you could um, design it yourself in so what pro or whatever design editing software program you chose to use however there was another one on there that was my fob no so what pro or the name of it was my fob no swp now that is the file that we are using here and it has an extra step in there which i'll explain now why that's the case and i have it listed here um, on the machine if you look on the machine you'll see that there's two squares here and then we start with the tab now the reason for those two squares is so that you can know where to put your monogram from off of the machine that's that simple now this is for doing the keychain with just the machine and using a letter to put a letter on your key fob all right what we'll do to start off is we'll go ahead and we'll stitch out these placement squares now this placement isn't for placement of your glitter canvas or glitter vinyl it's for placement of your letters so let's go ahead and get that stitched out the machine itself is ready for the next step which is stitching out the fob but we don't want to go to that step we'll just wait for right now so let's leave that there now i'm gonna take this off to show you what we're getting ready to work with okay so here are the squares on the glitter canvas all right there's one here and as you see i placed it really close to the edge there it almost that, that's actually too close for comfort but it's there so that's the reason why i say do five by four and a half to give you wiggle room this one was a little bit smaller than four and a half so um, it was a little tougher to judge on this one but here are your squares okay now what you need to do in order to put your monogram on these without a design editing software program you can do it with this machine all right what you have to do is you have to kind of judge where the center of this key fob is all right and we're going to have to do this by looks well because the design editing software program you can maneuver the letter and you can find the center a lot better on the computer first and then save the design and put it on your computer well without that you have to use the machine all right this is how you would do this with just the machine only no software editing program all right 
So we'll put this back on the machine. And as I mentioned before, it stopped because it's wanting to stitch out this tab, but we don't have our letter on here yet. So let's go ahead and put the letter on there. So we need to back out of this particular design and it says, okay, to delete the selected pattern, we're going to say, okay. All right. And it takes us back to what's on our drive that we pulled over and we want to back out of that as well. And we'll go to our letters. So the letter that I like to use quite frequently with this one is uh, up here in the upper right hand corner. It looks kind of um, typewriter ish for a lack of better words. So I'll select that one. And on this one, we're going to go with the letter R. So I'm going to go over, I'm going to select the letter R and I'm going to leave it on large because the cool thing with the machine and the fobs that I've designed or digitized the uh, large letter fits perfectly in the middle and that's what size these are and you see it it fits beautifully in the middle of this so leave it on large and that's if you have this particular line of machines it would be the se 400 the se 425 the brother uh, pe 500 you actually could even do this with the pe 770 there's the H1, I think is what it's called. There are several machines in this line. It's the four by four brother embroidery home machine, okay, that you can do this with. All right, so now that we've picked our R and we've got it on large, we want to adjust. So when you hit it just, we want to do layout, all right? So once you go into the layout, there's your letter R. So you need, to know that the letter R will stitch centered wherever you center your needle. I Let me repeat that. The letter R will stitch centered wherever you center your needle. All right, so let's center the needle on this keychain so that the letter R will stitch out centered from where the needle starts. All right, so let's move the needle down. And that's about centered on this key fob. Now I'm gonna move it over a little bit and it may be a little hard to see, but I'm trying to do this as best as I can um, in the middle-ish, all right? So you're gonna have to play with this on your own to get the feel of how to judge the middle of it. And now that we've moved it down towards the middle, we're gonna move it over in the middle. And the cool thing is you can nudge it by little bitty amounts or you can hold it down. It'll jump a little bit faster. Now to me, that looks to be the center of that square. I'm hoping so. Without using an editing software program, it's kind of hard to judge, but I'm gonna hope that that's the center of that square. It kind of looks like it. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna nudge it over just a little bit more. And we're gonna go ahead and press start this is how you would do your own and you have to use the letters that come in the machine um you possibly could do this if you bought letters um say for instance we know that this letter was an inch and a half so if you bought a letter that was an inch and a half you possibly can do this with those uh, letters as well there's going to be some caveats there because I know like one of my favorite fonts is Grace Swirl that's also on Stitchtopia website and it's really pretty. The letters have a lot of big flourishes to them. So even the one inch letters, the swirl is too big for this little keychain. So the Grace Swirl font wouldn't work in this instance, but this font will. This is uh, this was the elegant monogram font. So you just pick the one letter and you load it into the machine the exact same way like we did with the R that comes on the machine and we'll move it to about where the center of the keychain is and press start and we'll watch it stitch out and we'll make a keychain without using embroidery design editing software. Now that we've done the R, let me take it off and show you how well did we do? It wasn't too bad. It wasn't completely off center. Matter of fact, it kind of looks good. I did think I did pretty decent with that. So we have the R and this is roughly in the middle of the key fob. And like I said, it's kind of hard to judge because 
you don't have uh, the embroidery editing software program where it will help you line it up a little bit better. Now we have two keychains, and remember this one is upside down. So how do you do that one? We'll put it back on the machine. And this time I'm going to do a different letter. So we'll delete that letter out. Now I'm gonna go back and do a letter M. So we'll leave it on large and we want to go to adjust. We want to do layout. This time, however, we want to rotate that letter because this fob is upside down. So we'll rotate it first. So let's switch it and we'll hit the rotate button, which is up under where it says size and layout. We're going to hit that rotate and it gives you options, 90 degrees, 10 degrees or one degree. And we want it to do in 90 degree increments. So I'm going to hit either one of the 90 degrees and now it's facing that way. And now we have it facing the direction of the key fob so now we'll hit the back key and now we want to line it up in the center of this other key fob so we'll do the exact same thing we'll go up this time to the middle of that square and now we'll move over and that's over too far looks to be and I'm thinking that's the middle of that keychain key fob rather all right so now that we have found the middle of that we have the letter that we choose and we have it turned upside down because this is this key fob is going the opposite direction so now we want to hit go and we'll do the other key fob so now that this is finished sewing out stitching out we're gonna hit okay and we're gonna back out of the letters because we're done with the letters. We don't need them anymore. And let me pull it off and show you how it turned out. Okay, so here's the R and there's the M. And you can see we got it centered pretty good. I can't complain about how that turned out. So we'll put that back on and now it's time to actually do the key fob part, All right? So we'll hit and uh, pull back up the so what pro no version of the key fob and there it starts with those two squares again the placement squares to allow us to center our letters now we don't need that step anymore so we'll go into adjust and we're going to go into this middle one where it shows the needle and plus and minus sign so that we can advance the stitches all right and we're not advancing the needle through this we're going to actually advance the color stops we need to put the back on the key fobs so let's take this off back off of the machine and we'll go ahead and add the back part all right so again you want to try and line this up as much as possible and we know that um we were kind of close to the edge so you want to take a look at where it's lining up based on the stitches um, and you also can, as I mentioned before, hold it up to the light and see if that helps you line it up as well. We're going to use our pieces of tape to get these put back on. And there we have the back and the front so that we want to cover up the stitching for the letters now we want to go ahead and allow the key fob part to stitch out so as you see you can do custom key fobs even on just your machine without the embroidery editing software so let's take these out and cut them out as their key chain. Well, here you are. These were done without using any embroidery editing software program at all. So you are able to make these yourself, design your own with the pattern that I have for sale for just a dollar on my site. Um, and you can actually create your own key fobs. 
Um, we also have these that we did with the embroidery editing software program and with some pretty snazzy fonts from stitchtopia.com that you are able to go online and purchase yourself on sale right now for the entire month of June. So here we have it key fobs they're really cool you just get you um some of these little key rings you slide them on snap it around and there you can attach these to any book bag any purse any keychain or if you like you can even use the uh claw clasp um, and i'll leave the link to the circles as well as the claw clasps um, in the description below uh, these little circles I actually got from Walmart. I ran out and grabbed some because I used up the circles that I got um, from online. And here we have it. So you are uh, not limited as much as you think by the 4x4 hoop. Or I wasn't as limited as much as I thought with the 4x4 hoop with doing in the hoop uh, designs. It, it can be done. Um, it's smaller designs, but still something really neat nonetheless a cute personalized gift that you can give to some of anyone I mean even with the leather uh, that they sell online You could make one for a man and do his the monogram this circle monogram would be really cute for a guy or even the plain font that comes built in on your embroidery machine so your options are there I mentioned in a prior video that we were going to do a giveaway and the giveaway is based on doing our key fobs or snap tabs or keychains. So what I am going to do is I am going to get five sheets of glitter canvas, five sheets of glitter canvas and send them to a winner of our contest. And the contest that we're going to do is quite simple. What you need to do is uh, like the video because of course who likes a giveaway? Who doesn't like a giveaway rather? And what we will ask is that you leave a comment below saying, yes, I love glitter canvas. And when you leave your comment below, then we will definitely um, add your name into a drawing to win the um, five sheets of glitter vinyl. Now, this is not a contest that's sponsored by YouTube in any way, shape, form, or fashion. This uh, contest is purely drawn up and imagined by yours truly. So be sure to leave your comment below. If you would like an extra entry into the contest, share the video. If you share the video and share the link, then I will add your name into the uh, pot another time. Also, for an added two extra entries into the contest, send me a picture of your completed key fob. You can um, send it to me through message i believe on youtube you can send a picture if you can't then feel free to send it to me through email uh, which is the baby's booty at gmail.com t-h-e-b-a-b-y-s-b-o-o-t-y at gmail.com if you send me a just a quick pic with your cell phone of your key fob that you've customized you can either do it uh, from your machine or you can do it with any font that you've gotten either you already have it or one on stitchtopia doesn't matter just as long as it is your key fob that you did yourself and i look forward to seeing all of the many designs that you guys come up with in making your own key fob i would also like to leave a link in the description below for two other merchants that I have purchased snap tabs from. Um, one of the ones that I did purchase, um, which I thought was super cute that I dropped on the floor, forgive me, um, is this one here. I can't adult today. I thought that was really cute and quite whimsical. Um, you'll find a lot of whimsical keychains. You'll even find some that are benefit for like for instance there's one for aldi i don't know if you have an aldi grocery store in your area and you know in order to use the buggy at aldi you put the quarter in 
Well, they have a quarter carrier key fob that you can purchase online. So I'll put two merchants that I've constantly purchased snap tabs from down in the description below and um, you can browse their huge selection of snap tabs that you're able to do on your 4x4 hoop. So there are a lot of them and you will be scrolling for hours. I'm just letting you know ahead of time, my bad, <laughs> because there are so many of them and they are all so super cute. So look forward to seeing any of your snap tabs that you created yourself or um, feel free to also show me any snap tabs that you might have purchased. Now for the contest, it has to be one that you designed yourself either on the machine or with the embroidery design editing program with a letter or monogram. Uh, but you are more than welcome to send me any designs, any pictures of anything that you've done based on our videos here and I will feature them in upcoming videos. I look forward to doing that because of course we love our baby's booty community. You guys are awesome. The subscription rate is steadily rising. We really appreciate it. We love anyone who tunes in. Please leave comments below. I look forward to reading your comments. If you have any questions, I do answer my comments. Also, if you like this video, if it proves to be helpful to you, please leave a like below hit the like button i really appreciate it that lets me know that i've done my job to explain everything clearly to you um, and in a manner that allows you to feel comfortable trying it yourself um, i really appreciate any subscribers so please subscribe that will allow you to be aware whenever we do post a new video and you can be up with the latest and the greatest here at the baby's booty so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please enter the contest. I have five sheets of glitter canvas that I would like to send to you. Um, and I look forward to all the entries. I am really excited about the pictures that will be coming um, so that I can share them in future videos. If you have any suggestions of videos that you would like to see, please leave them in the comments below or send me a private message. I don't mind that either. And we'll work towards getting videos done. Um, I also have a couple of other ones already that have been requested and yes they are in the works and on the planner so I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video and of course until the next time we want you to have happy embroidering. Click here to subscribe to our channel. Click here to view other videos in our tutorial playlist. And click here for the next video that you should find helpful. Thank you.